One of the most important things that we have access to out in the backcountry is water. So today we're going to talk all about water and how to properly treat and filter the water that you have access to to make it safe to drink and use for cooking and such when you're out on a backpacking trip. Now it's important to understand that we may not always know what is in the water that we have access to in the backcountry and there's so many different ways that you can collect water. It may not always be a beautiful mountain stream like I have right next to me here. It may be a literal cow trough out in a field that is stagnant, stinky water. It may be water that has a lot of heavy metals in it, maybe has like a sulfur smell to it, doesn't have the enticing aspects that a nice mountain stream like this has. Or it's a desert canyon where you're collecting water out of potholes where rainwater has gone into those places and may be a little stagnant. Not all water is going to be awesome. And upstream from where you are collecting your water, maybe things that are less than ideal. For example, on a trip I was on a few years ago, there was a dead cow right next to the water source that obviously was a concern of contamination beyond the normal things that you find in the water. So what are the things in water that we should be concerned about that using a filter is important to have so that you don't get sick when you collect and drink that water while you're out on a trip. So the most common things for us to be concerned about are going to be bacteria and protozoa that are the most prevalent in the water systems that we collect water from in the backcountry. That's going to be things like Cryptosporidium, Giardia, E. coli, that can make you really sick, but is going to have a delayed reaction most of the time for when you are then home from your trip and all of a sudden your body is like, something is not right. These are microscopic bacteria and protozoa that do cause problems. And so it's important for you to filter your water so that you can prevent yourself from getting sick. So today I'm gonna to show you four common methods of treating and filtering water to make the water safe to drink. Let's start with a hollow fiber filter like this Sawyer Squeeze. Now hollow fiber filters are arguably the most popular and efficient way for us to filter water on the trail today. They are really simple in use where you are literally squeezing water that's dirty through the filter and out comes clean water. So what's inside of this plastic housing is a bunch of tube-like strands that are all collected together that have microscopic pores inside of those strands that are at a size of 0.1 microns. At least that's the case for the Sawyer Squeeze. And so anything that is bigger than 0.1 micron is gonna get trapped in those pores, which means all of the bacteria all of the protozoa, the things that are going to make you sick are gonna get captured in those pores and not be able to come through the other side, which then makes it clean and safe to drink once you put the water through this. Now these are very easy to maintain. They don't have moving parts, but they do require maintenance. And the first thing is, is you should be back flushing your filter. So oftentimes, in the case of the Sawyer, but other hollow fiber filters, whether that's Katadin or Platypus, you are gonna have some way to back flush and push clean water the opposite direction through the filter and remove anything that is basically clogging up those pores. Because the other thing that is being collected inside of the filter is sediment and things that are really small that are basically going to clog up the filter. The other important thing about ho hollow fiber filters is these cannot freeze. If they freeze because of those pores, when water freezes, it expands and it will break apart those microscopic pores and basically render this useless. So when you are in freezing temperatures, put this in your jacket, put it in your sleeping bag to sleep overnight so that you don't have the issue of the filter freezing and then not being effective to be able to give you clean, safe drinking water. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to have some kind of water bag that is going to be my dirty water bag. 
My favorite option is this Knock Vecto, which has the opening here that makes it really easy to capture that dirty water. And then on the bottom end here, I've got some threads where I'm gonna take my hollow fiber filter and I'm gonna thread that onto the bag. I'm gonna make sure I get a nice, good seal. And then I'm just going to squeeze the water through the filter. All of that water coming out right now is good, clean water. So I'll take my bottle and I'm gonna squeeze that clean water into the bottle, which then gives me the ability to have clean, safe drinking water. It's also really important to make sure that you truly do have a nice, good seal here because you don't want dirty water leaking out, coming down the side of the filter and getting on or inside of your bottle. So I typically will like to hold this at an angle if possible, but that's usually a problem if you're not paying attention, so do pay attention to that. The next method of treating your water in the backcountry is to use a product called Aqua Mira. This is a chlorine dioxide water treatment that basically kills the bad things in the water that would make you sick. It does not filter the water, it just treats the water to kill the stuff in the water that would make you sick and so when it goes into your body, it can't do the bad things to your body. So this is a chlorine dioxide two-part water treatment. You have a part A that is the chlorine dioxide and you have a part B that is a phosphoric acid activator. You're going to mix these two together in a container and you're gonna let that container sit with the two parts in there for about five minutes. It's gonna turn about the color of Mountain Dew. So what I can do is take my water bottle and I can dunk this into my dirty water. Then I'm going to take my Aquamira, I'm gonna take my cap off. Now it's really important that you make sure that you clean and have your threads safe from the dirty water that you dunked your bottle into. So wiping it clean is gonna be an important part of this process. But I'm just gonna take that chlorine dioxide, that mixture, and I'm gonna dump that into my bottle. And this is for one liter of treatment. I'm gonna let this go in there, shake it up, and make sure that it's all mixed well. And then I'm gonna let it sit for 15 minutes, or if the water is really turbid, has some sediment, or if it's actually really cold water, like I've got here, I'm gonna let it sit for 30 minutes. And after that time, everything inside of the bottle has then been rendered dead and makes the water then safe to drink. My one thing about using the Aquamira product is this can tend to give you some gut problems. It works, it does its job, it's a effective and efficient way for you to treat your water, especially if you have clean, beautiful mountain water like this and you don't want to go through that filtering process, this will do the job. But do know that it can cause some just not happiness with bowel movements and how that process is in your body. But it is totally safe to drink. <laughs> it is a chemical, but it is safe to drink and it makes your water safe to drink as well. Now the next style of water treatment we'll talk about is use of a water purification system. Now the difference between a water filter and a water purifier is what it is capable of removing from the water. So with your hollow fiber filter, it is going to essentially remove bacteria and protozoa from the water. That is pretty much it. When you are purifying the water, you are removing much, much more from the water. Bacteria, protozoa, viruses, heavy metals, that kind of thing. The issue with purifiers is they can be significantly more expensive and they typically have a shorter lifespan of the amount of water they can treat on the filtration system that is inside of that system. So a good example of a purifier is this one from Grail, which this is essentially a two-piece system here where you take this outer piece, dunk it in the water, 
So you have your dirty water here. And this black piece on the bottom is your purifier filtration block. And all I'm gonna do is just push this down and it's gonna move that dirty water from the outer piece to the inside. And I'll take my cap off and now that is clean, delicious, safe drinking water. The other thing that's cool about a lot of these purification systems is they also have some kind of activated carbon filter with the treatment process, which that carbon is actually gonna help enhance the taste of the water. So unlike a hollow fiber filter, it's gonna remove some of that taste, but it's just not going to remove all of it or enhance it, where a purifier is going to have often activated carbon to help with that uh, taste and smell as well that you would have with your water. Another popular option would be a pump style filter. Now, not all pump style filters like this are going to be purifiers. This Wayfarer from Lifesaver does happen to be a purifier, but another popular option out there on the market is the MSR Mini Works or the Katadin Pocket Hiker. Those are filters that use a ceramic filter that works like a hollow fiber where it removes bacteria and protozoa. This one is a purifier. So the way that this functions is really simple. I've got my outlet side that I'm gonna put into my water bottle and then I've got my inlet side that is gonna go into the water. And as I pump, it's just gonna suck the water from that piece that is in the water. And then it's gonna start pumping that water that is clean into my bottle. So it's forcing dirty water through the cartridge inside of the filter, making it possible for me to have good, clean drinking water. The nice thing about these is they're super quick, but the downside is they're bulky, they're heavy, and you've got moving parts. So there's things that can break on them and they can be an issue that way where a hollow fiber filter, like I mentioned before, doesn't have moving parts. So it's a little bit easier to maintain, but that was super quick to get a full liter of water. So that's a pump style filter that also happens to be a purifier. The last style of water treatment we'll talk about today is to boil your water. Now it's common knowledge that boiling water kills everything in it and would make it safe to drink. But this would be my last choice of everything that we've talked about today because it's not the most efficient way for you to get clean, safe drinking water. It is not efficient in the sense that you're relying on your stove or a fire for you to get that water boiled to the point that it's safe to drink. It wastes fuel, it wastes time, and there's just better ways to do it. But as a last resort, this is absolutely an option. So I would just take my cup, my pot, dip it in the water, stick it on my stove, and then once my water has hit a rolling boil, that water is then safe to drink once it is cooled down to the point that you can actually drink it. But there's a lot of information out there of how long should that water boil before it's safe to drink. The short answer is once that water hits a rolling boil, you have reached the point that everything in there that would be bad for you has been killed and now you're safe to consume that water. If you wanna be a little more cautious, go ahead and let it boil for 30 seconds to a minute. Where this type of treatment makes sense is if you do winter camping where you are melting snow. But it is important to still bring that water once the snow has melted to a rolling boil because snow is not clean. Birds, other things, animals, whatever could have made that snow dirty and disgusting, full of bacteria. So still make sure that you get that full rolling boil when you are using that as a treatment method. Again, it's not my favorite option, but it is an option. And as a last resort, even in a survival setting, that is a way for you to treat your water and make it safe to drink. So those are four popular and very common and effective ways for you to filter and treat your water when you're out on a backpacking trip. Now, they're not the only ways for you to treat your water. 
you have other options like other gravity style filters, ceramic filters, UV lights like a SteriPen, inline filters. But for the most part, these are the four most common, most approachable and effective ways for you to make it really simple to get clean, safe drinking water and water for use for cooking and such when you're on a backpacking trip. So hopefully you found that educational and helpful and you learned something from this, but let me know what your favorite method of water treatment is on your backpacking trips. Let's have a conversation about it. Thank you so much for watching today. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later.